The reason that I handle Diamond in almost every one of my videos is that he's really handleable. I don't have to look at him or worry about him. But what about the other ones? The ones that aren't so handleable? Today, we're gonna go over the top five least handleable reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wicked Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. To clarify, this isn't to say that these animals are bad pets or you shouldn't get these reptiles. It's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that these reptiles are definitely not the most handleable, and if you're looking for something you can handle without too much worry, these are not the ones for you. However, they're all great, and I'll tell you why. Starting off with number five, most chameleons. Most chameleons are beautiful, amazing. Panther chameleons, veiled chameleons, Parsons chameleons, the big boys. They are all a dream to work with. But when I say work with, I don't mean handle, most of the time. Most of these animals, although robust in size and stature, unless we're talking about, you know, carp chameleons or something that's a little bit smaller, they can deal with handling, but they tolerate it and they don't really enjoy it. And in fact, it stresses them out most of the time. This isn't to say that all chameleons are like this. It's just most of them, especially things like Jackson's chameleons, veiled chameleons, veiled chameleons especially, are known for being cantankerous, they don't really want to be handled. There's some that will handle it better than others, but why you'd want one in the first place? They're a great display animal. If you had a big Parsons chameleon in a giant enclosure, or even a panther chameleon in something that's, you know, 4x4x2 four by four by or 2x2x4, two by two by that would be really cool too. They're solitary creatures, so you're going to watch them on their own. They are diurnal. They're gonna be eating things like bugs and flicking that tongue out. So don't get me wrong, they're amazing animals. I love chameleons. I don't have any though, just simply because they're a little bit more fragile than most. So I don't keep them for that reason. Everybody I know who's had chameleons has been to a vet for their chameleon. I have over hundred reptiles. I can count on one hand how many times I've been to an exotic vet. So with that said, let's move on to number four. Another lizard, we're gonna talk about toke geckos. I think you saw this coming. Toke geckos are amazing. They're beautiful animals, and that's why I think most people want them. Most people want them because they look like maybe the most beautiful lizard in the world. They're this cool blue color with these orange spots. They have really big heads, big bodies. In fact, they're the second biggest gecko in the world, arguably, and they're from Southeast Asia. So to take care of them, they like it warm and humid. Think Thailand, Indonesia, places like that. And on top of the fact that they're beautiful and fun to watch and they can jump around and you can tong feed them if you really get them going, and if you're someone like Diana Reptiliatus, thanks for the footage, my friend, then you could get them to jump on you and eat from you and then jump back in their enclosure. But you're not gonna be handling them like you would say, I don't know, uh, gargoyle gecko, crested gecko, leopard gecko, whatever. It's just not going to happen 99% of the time. However, the noises that they make are amazing. The sound, the toke is, that's what they're called toke geckos. It sounds like toke when they're kind of screaming or making whatever noise that they're making. I think it's really cool. One of my favorite parts about trying to sleep in Southeast Asia last year, there's a video right here if you wanna watch some of those adventures, was listening to these guys on the balcony. Literally, they're on the balcony, I can see them, I can hear them, and they're just screaming. And it was kind of a beautiful sound, not annoying. There are insectivores, they need a little bit larger of an enclosure than something like a crested gecko, for example. They do lay eggs and breed pretty easily. There's a good demand for them. But at the same time, if you want something that's going to be handled, these animals will bite you a lot and they do hurt a lot. These guys have really strong jaws for a gecko of this size or for an animal of this size, I should say. So if they bite you, you're gonna feel it, you're gonna know about it, it's gonna suck and they are not shy about biting at all. Before we move on, I wanna say thanks to today's sponsor, Ridge Wallet. I love my Ridge Wallet. I'm not joking. Look at the size of this thing. It fits in my pocket. It doesn't create a bulge. Ridge is the best wallet that I've ever tried. And right now, they're running their Hennessy sweepstake. That means your next wallet can turn into a Hennessy Bronco Velociraptor. This is maybe one of the coolest cars that I've ever seen. More on that in a second. The reason you'd want a Ridge wallet in the first place, well, first of all, no one's gonna come up and beep boop, steal your stuff through your pocket, it's RFID blocking. It's this thin and it comes in over 30 colors, patterns and designs. I love the black, I love the orange, I love the carbon fiber. I love the fact you can have either a money clip on the back or like you see here, a cash strap to keep your cash secure. Or how about 
the key case. I love this Hennessy key case. This is my new everyday carry. I've used one of these key cases for over a year because why would you have gangly keys when you can have one of these? I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. And you get up to 30% off your order when you're buying the Ridge wallet and key case together. And you get a full 99 days to test drive it. No questions asked if you don't like it. And if you do like it and you keep it, and for some reason something goes on, it's a lifetime warranty. But right now, without spending a single dollar, you can enter on the website for a chance to win a brand new upgraded Hennessy Ford Bronco, or if you like cash, 75,000 in cash. It's a pretty sweet deal if you ask me. And you get a bonus entry for every $1 you spend on the site, and custom Hennessy products come with up to 1,000 entries. And if you use my link, ridge.com slash WWR, you'll get an extra 10 entries on the house. If you've ever been considering getting a Ridge wallet, today is the day. Hit the link below, go to ridge.com slash WWR. Thanks Ridge for sponsoring today's episode. Let's move on with the rest of the list. Let's talk about number three, tortoises. Now the reason that I'm saying tortoises is because just logistically to handle a tortoise, most of them are too big to, I don't know, like if I'm handling diamond, for example, like this, you know, and he's kind of lazy, so he's not gonna walk hand over hand, but I can handle him, you know, and put him on my shoulder, whatever. A tortoise, not so much. You're gonna pick them up and they're gonna freak out. They don't like to be picked up. They don't like to be on their back. You're not gonna goochie goochie goo on their stomach. They're not going to like that. Tortoises aren't really an animal for handling. They're a great animal to interact with on the ground. If you have something big like a sulcata or something a little bit smaller, like, I don't know, a cherry head, red foot, whatever, these animals can be interacted with. They're great for interacting, but not handling because they just don't like it. Now, why you'd want a tortoise is because they're really fun. Imagine like a dog that, I mean, realistically, would you pick up your golden retriever? How often do you pick up your golden retriever or St. Bernard or whatever? Like very rarely. So you can still interact with these animals and pet them and love them and the whole thing. And you can do that with these animals also. There is no reason why you can't interact and kind of boop on the top of the head of your tortoise or just look at them, touch them, uh, watch them walk around your yard, supervised, make cool enclosures for them. They're fun to watch eat. They're fun to watch move around because they are pretty slow. I love tortoises. I think they're amazing. I love keeping reptiles outside and there's not too many that are better for this than tortoises. So with that said, I mean, yeah, just don't pick them up. They don't like that. Moving on to number two, let's talk about a snake. Amazon tree boas, obviously. If you know what an Amazon tree boa is, you know that 99% of the time, these things have one goal in life. It is to bite you. Of course, that's not actually true. I'm being an exaggerator here. I am speaking hyperbole a bit. These animals don't want to hurt you, but they are very defensive. And I imagine the reason is, this is an arboreal... That's just the monkey tail skinks making a racket. Amazon tree boas are an arboreal species that are skinny. They're thin. They're not very big around. They don't have a lot of girth to them. And it's very easy to hurt them if you manipulate them the wrong way. So obviously in the wild, if you're small, you're going to be defensive because there's a lot of things that are going to eat you. Not only that, but these are very fast snakes. The strike range on them is wild because they are so skinny, because they don't have so much girth. They can hold their body up from the back end and shoot the front end very quickly and for much larger distances than a lot of other species of snake. So you're going to find these guys in enclosures, if you keep them properly, that are pretty big, pretty tall. They're amazing to look at. They're only four or five feet, but they're beautiful. Like, I will give you that. They are really cool to look at. And there are the very, very, very rare instances where you can take one that will just crawl around on you like it's a ball python. I know that there's gonna be someone in the comments section. Well, my, uh, yeah, okay, but you're part of the 1%. If I told you that humans, on average, the average man is five foot nine to five foot 11, which, well, I'm Shaq and I'm seven foot. There's anomalies. Of course, there's gonna be anomalies with all of these species. But in general, if you get an Amazon tree boa and you wanna handle it, you're also gonna get bit. They're gonna be scared of you. It stresses them out. If you want an animal that's arboreal that you're gonna wanna handle, get a spotted python or something like that. Similar size, but they're not gonna be as defensive and they're a little bit easier to handle and more difficult to harm. They're just gonna be easier all the way around. And yes, Amazon tree boas are from the Amazon. Let's move on to the next one. We're talking about number ones. Let's just paint with a broad brush. Hots, venomous snakes, obviously, for so many reasons. If you're gonna keep venomous snakes, 
whatever you do you my friend i'm advising against it for most people but if you do handle them you're gonna have a bad time probably eventually even the guys who are experts who even i respect i don't really necessarily agree with everything that they do but um i don't know i can think of two great examples of free handling venomous guys who have been bit and went to the hospital and had issues do you want that to be you well, it's going to be because you're probably not as advanced in care and handling as these two. You guys know who I'm talking about, right? And I'm not throwing shade at either of these guys. I, in fact, like them both. However, I'm telling you that if you're going to handle venomous snakes, it is a giant risk that you will get bit. No matter how much you think you're an expert, no matter how good you think you are, accidents do happen. Is it an accident on your part as the handler? Yes. Is that an excuse? No. So I'm saying don't free handle snakes. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You're a fully grown adult. If you are one, if you're a child, I'm telling you don't. If you're a full grown adult, you're going to do whatever you're going to do. But I'm telling you it's a bad idea. I'm telling you that it's not a good idea to keep these snakes for most people anyway. But if you're going to handle venomous snakes to show off for education, something like that, use a hook, use bite proof gloves, be smart about it. When I'm showing venomous snakes in the field, when I go to these places that I find them in the wild, I'm standing at a far distance. If I handle them at all, it's with a snake hook or it's with somebody who really knows what they're doing. And even then I'm not free handling. So anyway, the worst handling of all the reptiles are venomous snakes, period. So there you go. Let me know in the comment section below what you think the worst handling snakes are, or worst handling reptiles. Should I do a best handling? Let me know. And while you're down there, please hit the like and subscribe. Helps the channel more than you could ever know. And a special thanks, as always, to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You guys get videos early, discounts on merch. You guys get all that and more for as little as $1 a month. That's it. Because I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.